Let's welcome in Kay Barkwell, the executive director of Horses with Hearts. Kay, good morning to you. Good morning to you guys and ladies. Yeah. It's always great to be here. It's been a little while since we've had you in studio, I think. It has. Right? Yeah. Yeah, how are you doing? Moving at high speeds. Like, I'm never <laughs> sitting down. Well, I am sitting down, but I'm doing something while I'm there. But, yeah, we have been moving and shaking at the farm. Who's moving faster, you or the horses? Uh, they probably do. <laughs> I don't know, maybe not in this heat. <laughs> but yeah, not in this heat, but overall, I think anybody's moving. I'm moving, but I'm not moving fast, but I'm consistent. How so. many horses are you up to? We actually have three miniatures in our Many Hearts program. I have four ponies and 11 horses. All right, give us an overview of what Horses with Hearts is, how it started, and, and how you became involved. Well, it started back in 2005. Um, we are in, we, we now do equine assisted services. We originally only did therapeutic riding, um, but we have inv- advanced into the equine learning and mental health fields since 2020. So um, we've quadrupled in our services. We've gone from servicing 35 to 38 individuals a season to over 200 last year. So we are, like I said, moving and shaking, and 2020 did not stop us. It catapulted us into um, quadrupling our services. So, How does a person who benefits from your services become aware of those services? Well, really now it's a lot of word by mouth. I mean, we have a, a really good, solid website at, the, at this time, but most of it's word of mouth, just people sharing, and um, of course I'm out in the in the public as much as I can be, you know, sharing the vision and and the benefits of not only therapeutic riding, but equine learning. And what are some of those benefits, Kay? Oh, gosh. Um, And I'm just going to try to to bring it in. There's just a powerful healing space that's created when we foster a partnership with the horse. And um, while they're there, they have a real-time, healthy life skills Um, they get to practice that in real time and we see emotions changing it regulates their nervous system Um, it increases our ability to live life more fully Um, one of the programs we started just this spring was a veterans program with six lady veterans some of them only did six weeks we have one lady that did 12 and before that um, they have to take an anxiety it's a national survey developed by the VA it's called um, let me see if I anyway they they have to take it's 20 questions it's a PLC 5 evaluation Mm -hmm. it's 20 questions this lady scored a 39 before she started riding with us and after six weeks her score dropped to 20 and after the second six weeks it dropped to 80 that means her anxiety and PTSD episodes dropped by 79 percent that's astounding you know so it is just overwhelming what the relationship with the horse does not only physically but now mentally and emotionally is what we're learning bill yeah i had the great privilege uh, of volunteering with Kay for several years it was one of the most rewarding things i've ever done uh and watching the impact it had on a large range of people all the way from uh, uh children small children up to uh senior citizens uh it's tell that I've told several times, I think you even mentioned on the show a couple so times, one of the most amazing, heartwarming incidents I've ever seen was a young child, probably eight or nine years of age, that was nonverbal, non-responsive, had wonderful parents. They were trying to get him involved, but they would have to carry him there, put him on the horse, and again, non-responsive in any way except when he sat on the horse you could see a glimmer glimmer of a smile and that was it made you made your heart yeah. warm for him. and you see this every day every day and uh, now Kay, you have a regular program are you still doing that or has it gotten too hot Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm it serious. got hot yesterday. Yeah, I'm serious because you, yeah. you, you, you're you very protective of your horses. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's too hot or if there's lightning, thunder, and the like, you do not do that. But are you able to continue except for this hot weather uh, into the fall? Yeah, we have managed over the last 15 years. We do a uh, spring, summer, and fall. And we just kicked off our fall semester, okay. September, 
October yesterday, but we canceled because we have a, a gauge in the arena. It was 114 degrees in the yeah. arena yesterday. Yes. So we canceled and, um, you know, we still battle that, you know, issue with the weather. It's, you know, something that I thought um, was always going to be the deterrent to keep us from doing things. But since COVID, like I said, we've started about six programs and we just spin. If, if we can go, we go. If we can't, we stop. And um, we're not letting the weather deter us until we get that indoor and you have a lot of different t programs, a lot of types of different programs. In total, how many folks are you serving on a given year? Last year we served about 250. 250. It was like 246. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I that number will increase because we've added three programs this summer. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we've added another. Um, we do a, a horsepower summer camp that last year we did 80 kids. This year we did 100. Um, we've added the VA um, senior or the the um, veterans riding, and we've added a partnership with My Village, which is a program we partnered with the Brian O'Neill Organization at Foundation, and she does um, suicide prevention in middle schoolers and high schoolers. Mm -hmm. So we've averaged um, around 10 kids each month. We started in April, we'll go through October. And um, it's astounding the numbers of the increases of overdoses that are coming in with kids under the age of 19. And more than about, I think it's like 60% of those are attempted suicides. So that's huge in our area. And um, Lee has in six schools a program called um, Sources of Strength. And it's based on finding your source of strength so that when you're having that bad day, and we provide the space at the farm and we do equine learning and then she does music therapy art therapy and the kids get to come in and check that out so you know we'll probably top out there with about 100 kids maria talk a little bit about your here's my softball question about your building project and what it is that you hope to do hope to accomplish and where you are on the continuum of that okay well because of the United Way Unity campaign, we've made strides that I didn't even think about prior mm -hmm. to. Um, we now have a hay storage building. We're working on an equine learning building, which will allow us to extend, you know, during that bad weather, but also further into the season. Um, we added asphalt to the farm, which uh, makes mobility much easier, you know, for our individuals that do have ambulatory issues. But we are getting ready to kick off what we're calling the Stable 1952 Club. And it gives people opportunity to, to um, give to an annuity plan that will allow us to always have sustainability in a um, paid um, executive director all of us are still volunteers so we ne real realize that that's important as we continue to move forward so we're kicking we're putting that all together we're going to kick that off this fall following by a, a capital campaign to add that indoor which will be an indoor riding arena it will also have an educational building where we'll be able to pro provide ot and pt services um, a mental health intake we're currently partnering with be well and they do some equine psychotherapy at the farm two days a week, so that will increase and um, certainly be able to advance our leadership adventures program, which is leadership development for our businesses. So, and talk a little bit about that leadership program, because I know it's in conjunction with what you do, but it, um, I know the chambers take advantage of that, but other groups can come in and, and take advantage, and it's, wildly popular with all those <laughs> leadership berkeley leadership jefferson all those folks just um adore that program right. so talk a little bit about it that. is a strong leadership development program that focuses on um, engagement of your employees and we know everybody since COVID is suffering from keeping our employees engaged and and the wellness of their mental health so we do a strengths workshop that focuses on it helps us as individuals identify our strengths and where our sweet spots are and how we can take those from from a um, talent to a strength but we parallel with the horse and we talk about how the horse exists and how the horse leads and then they they get to go out and experience 
the horses and it just brings a whole different dementia into it we also do a trust one and everybody knows that trustworthiness and trusting today is paramount so we offer that to form for-profit businesses you can come as a group or you can come we do some individual we call them mixed groups where any that's like the chamber leadership um, berkeley and leadership jefferson do it and um, we do it for nonprofits. Stacy Roan sends all of her employees through it. It really helps her identify where can these people excel and what are their talents. And um, it's kind of team building on steroids. <laughs> but yeah. the amazing thing is 90% of what someone pays to go through the course stays at Horses with Hearts. Yeah. Kay, you've been talking about horses, but you also have a history with cows. <laughs> would you tell <laughs> us about? <laughs> yeah, would you tell about the your cash cow? By the way, good choice because cows with hearts doesn't sound nearly as appealing as horses with hearts. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> but but I, I love this, uh, the Kay's cash cow story. Mm-hmm. Well, it was just funny. You know, my daughter loves um, animals, and she came home one day and said, Hey, Mom, you know, uh, Mike Reiner's cow had babies, and it's a, one's a twin, and it won't the mama won't feed it so i'm going to bring it home and i'm like no i do not want <laughs> we a don't cow. need a cow we don't need a cow and to make the very long story short she did and then <laughs> when trinity united methodist church blessed us with the land that we have um, we went to the usda off usda office and said hey what are what are the government benefits and the first thing out of the lady's mouth was do you have any cows and i said one. <laughs> Does that count? She, she said, well, is it on the property? I said, at this point, nothing's on the property, yeah. but I can get him to the property. <laughs> um, it was a steer, it was it, you know, and, and um, so she said, well, if you put that cow on that property, you qualify for every program we have. Without him, you qualify for nothing. So we did move um, okay. him. I hope you gave your daughter a bonus. <laughs> yeah, she stood out there and she said, see, Mom, I told you God gave him to us for a reason. And I'm like eating the words. Um, we lost him two years ago. Um, he lived eight and a half years. And for a steer, that's pretty good life <laughs> expectancy. Um, it's because he was commiserating with all those horses. And, yeah. You know. Well, he had his own private pasture. Yeah. Oh, okay. But he loved people. Um, he loved to do <laughs> selfies. P- kids would go up and he just put his head over the fence and takes you know a a selfie with them and now since then we produce our own hay so we still are zoned agriculture and able to keep that status without him Um, but we're not thinking about another cow anytime soon put two horses in those pastures (laughs) How, how old was your daughter when she brought the cow home Oh, gosh, she was 22, 23 right, So this isn't ago. like a nine-year-old bringing home a cow. No, no. And he was really just about, he was only less than 24 hours old. Oh, and right. um, she put him, she put some pan- panels up in our backyard. And God love her every day. She took him out. Every night she took him up and put him in the garage. Or actually, she brought her horse trailer home, put him in the horse trailer. And then every morning she would take him back out. And um, I swore I wouldn't feed him. I did feed him three times <laughs> when she was out of town, but um, he really was a huge blessing and a, and a delight to have in our in our yeah. world. It saved you a lot of money too. It the, did, the yeah. Cash, it, the cash cow. So. He he brought yeah. a lot of federal yeah. funds yeah. to us. Kay, you mentioned the indoor ride in the arena, which has been a dream of yours for quite a while. How much money will it require to make that happen? Well, we really haven't at this point. I mean, we have um, the ac- ac- the ac- bleh, the um, drawings, the architectural drawings for us. We're working on the site plans. We're working all, all of that. But our capital campaign will run about $3 million. But that will also finish the complete complex. It's going to add um, another parking lot. It's going to add um, an inclusive playground for our kids to be able to finish their riding lessons and go down and play with their brothers and sisters. And they don't have that opportunity in this community. And then um, the indoor and the educational building. And this will allow you to have 12 months of activity. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then adding that equine learning building, I just wrote a grant to add another paddock with a large overhang that's going to allow us to do it. We've realized over the time, in order for us to, to even put a little raindrop in the need in this community we have to have multiple work centers so we'll end up with that indoor having about six work centers covered work centers 
the recognition you have and the prestige you have in the community is very impressive. Uh, uh, day of uh, uh, day of caring is coming up, and every day of caring, if I drive out there, there seems to be a half the people that are participating in the day of caring is working with horses with hearts. Well, a lot of people anyway. Yeah, we've had any even you know 2021 when covid was still yeah. kind of hanging we had like 70 people there and but we average 150 to 170 people and it's really the community that makes yeah. this happen yeah. i mean not only you know they come out there they paint fence and and it's not just the day of carrying i just have groups constantly calling and saying hey can we come out they wash buckets they yeah. paint fence they pick up rocks um it just really you know and that's the way you know you talked about um, you know how you spread the word about something like this um, and it's really the very experiential whether you've been out there for the leadership program or you're painting a fence or the last time it was really hot when you hosted a chamber <laughs> mixer out there and I'm like oh my gosh it's hot um, and I but, say welcome to my world yeah you know all the time all the time but um, just you know tremendous community support and um, you know and and just go and do and and then you get hooked right yeah you really do and uh, and Kay has a big wonderful smile and is always laughing but when you're with horses with heart she's business and she ensures that the horses are treated with respect the riders are safety is a major consideration you never compromise on safety uh, uh, and uh, it's 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 very impressive watching everybody adhere to Kay's rules when you uh, when you get started. And, and talk do. talk a little bit about um, so you alluded to the volunteers who come and paint fences or pick up rocks, whatever. But talk about those who work hand in uh, hands on with um, uh, with the riders and and what kind of training they have to go through and so on yeah um we have a between 45 and 50 volunteers they most of them come one day a week i do have a small group of like six of us that because the horses have to be fed every day mm -hmm. you know i'm blessed with a couple of ladies that come every morning they check every horse they brush every horse they you know they they make sure everything's good they clean water troughs i mean there's so much that happens at a farm that you don't even think about about, sure. I didn't think about because we always boarded our horse. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't realize everything that went into it. And um, but to be a volunteer at Horses with Hearts, you have to be 14 years of age. Mm -hmm. um, we have two different pro two trainings you have to go through: an admin training and then an, a farm training. And it all walk walks around what we do, how we do it, in um, every particular thing that has to be done and um because not everybody wants to do that i right. mean some people want to paint fence right absolutely so, okay. and and that's fine we have a um, a couple of ladies that set up on the hill and they just write down because everybody wants to know what are the results of what we do mm -hmm. so we have a checklist and check off whether the rider communicated with its sidewalkers that day whether it refused to do something or it did something for the first time and a lot of that comes you know with the instructor um, it's more than a pony ride it's very educational they're doing a lot of stretching a lot of moving a lot of connecting red to red blue to blue you know just you know counting sometimes they have to count and so it's it's a whole wellness program for them you know we know because we've tracked it uh, everybody's got their i don't have one <laughs> but those little eye watches that track every step that you take and we know that when they're out there trudging in that sand and they come when it's hot they've come when it's raining we've been out there in the sleet we've been out there in the snow and um they just love what they do and many of them will say you know i was having my worst day today and when i got here everything everything flipped. changed mm -hmm. you know because you just you see the value of what it does for the kids and the parents you know we had a little boy this kid, child is still this well, he's 21 now he's not even a kid he's an adult you know i remember six or seven years ago his dad didn't come very often but he came and um, this young man has difficulty sitting up. I mean, we pretty much hold him on the horse, but he had a football in his hand and he was to throw it through the hula hoop. And his dad said, 
he's not going to throw that football through that hula hoop, is he? And I said, I think so. <laughs> and he said, I've waited his whole life huh. to see my son throw a football. And he said, if it happens, I'm going to cry. And I said, well, crank up the tears because I think it's going to happen. And that young man reached back and he threw that football straight through there. And I almost had to pick him up. I mean, his dad was just so thrilled. We don't think about the little things when our children are healthy, you know, and they're doing all the things. We don't think about the things that they they can't do. You know, I've had so many high schoolers come volunteer and within two or three weeks, they'll go, gosh, I just realized these kids are just like me. They want to have fun. They just want to come out and have fun. They want to have somebody talk to them, call them by their name and have fun. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's what that's really what we do. But so many things happen in the process. Sure.